Welcome to Import Gaming for the Win, a series of short videos featuring games that never made it outside of Japan, or at the very least, never made it to the US of A. With this series, I hope to share my love of Japanese retro games and hopefully introduce some gems from across the Pacific to people who missed the chance to play them the first time around. Today I'll take a brief look at Gunner's Heaven, a run and gun shooting game developed by Media Vision and published by SCEI for the PlayStation 1. It was released way back in 1995 in Japan, and a very early title in the system's large library of games. While Gunner's Heaven did manage to secure a power release under the name Rapid Reload, it never saw the light of day in North America, most likely due to the oddly anti-2D game stance that Sony Computer Entertainment America had at the time in regards to licensing games for the PS1. Anyway, about the game, it's a really fun, colorful, and challenging shooting game with minimal story and maximum action. It's pretty similar to the Metal Slug series or Gunstar Heroes, and in fact, I remember years ago in online forums and auction sites that people mistakenly believed that this game was the sequel to the latter. It would be easy to make that mistake since Gunner's Heaven so liberally pays homage to the Genesis classic. In Gunner's Heaven, there are six stages, and most are cleared by mowing down hordes of robots, mechas, and dog soldier guys, taking out a sub-boss or two, and then defeating a level boss. In order to do this successfully, you must cycle through four different weapon types, choosing the best one for the situation at hand. There is a standard normal shot, a homing shot, a grand shot, and a fire shot. Each type has unlimited ammo, but is pretty weak unless supplemented by power-up items, which are dropped by certain enemies. These add to the player's power level, which results in a more powerful shot. However, the power level is constantly being drained, so you must keep collecting these items and maintain a power level above zero in order to benefit from its effects. This creates a nice balance of forcing the player to cause as much destruction as possible, collecting power-ups, and moving along at a brisk pace in order to maintain the added bonuses from a powered-up weapon. Thankfully, the power level stops depleting during boss fights, so you won't have to worry about using a weakened weapon for a big fight. Well, usually anyway. Other gameplay mechanics include a slide, a wire shot, a boost item, a life item, and bombs. The slide is performed by pressing down on the D-pad and the jump button, and is an essential move to master in many cases. The wire shot, performed with the R2 button, is a nice option, but I found it was pretty useless for the most part. The boost item exponentially increases the attack and area of your shot for a brief period of time and are only found on rare enemies at predetermined intervals. The life item replenishes a little bit of the player's HP and is also found at fixed parts of each stage. And finally, there are bombs, which for the most part are just that, but we'll talk more about them in depth in a minute. You get to choose from two protagonists to play as, the spiky-haired Axel Sonics or the tomboyish Ruka Hetfield. Aside from the obvious differences between them aesthetically, the big thing that sets them apart are their arsenals. The four basic types of shots remain the same, but the range, pattern, and animations, those are all different. For example, Axel's fire shot is a powerful burst of flame that travels across the entire screen with a slow rate of fire. But Ruka's fire shot is a straight up flamethrower with very limited range but able to deal massive damage at a constant rate. It is up to the player to determine which character's array of weapons suit his or her playstyle the most. One more thing that is different too are how bombs are deployed. Axel has a Soul Deleter, which is a standard bomb that hits everything on screen, whereas Ruka uses a Force Field, which has more limited range and destroys anything in her immediate vicinity. There is a story about finding a hidden stone called Valkyrie before a militant group calling itself Pumpkinhead does, as well as some bouts of dialogue before and after boss fights, but it's pretty inconsequential and not really interesting. A weird thing about this game is that there is spoken dialogue in the game, but it is set to off by default. Granted, the voice acting is not necessary or particularly well done, but I don't know why that would be the default setting. I really enjoy Gunner's Heaven, but there are some inevitable negative points to the game. Short length, some awkward sound bits, and a bit of unbalance with certain weapon types. I'm looking at you, homing shot. There is no memory card support at all for this game, which means that any playthrough will start at the beginning, much like most run and gun games that preceded it. No big deal, but it would have been nice to have a level select and the ability to save high scores. Thankfully, sub-bosses sort of act like checkpoints, so when you die, you return to the last defeated boss. And there are infinite continues, which makes sense as this was a game developed exclusively for the PlayStation, rather than a straight arcade port like most other shoot-'em-ups. In my opinion, the biggest letdown is that Gunner's Heaven is single-player only. 
In a game like this, and especially when there are already two playable characters, you'd think co-op would have been a given. But whether it was due to budgetary reasons, deadlines from the publisher, or a lack of a firm understanding on the workings of the hardware by the development team at the time, sadly, Gunner's Heaven is a solo venture. One thing I'll just mention randomly is that I always said that Axel looked a lot like Rudy from the RPG Wild Arms, with the spiky blue hair, headband, gun. Well, it turns out that it's not so much of a coincidence as the developer, Media Vision, is also behind the Wild Arms series of games. And Wild Arms 1 was in fact the game that they worked on right after completing Gunner's Heaven. So, there you go. Fun fact. Anyway, if you like Gunstar Heroes or run and gun shooting games in general, Gunner's Heaven is a fine game to add to your collection. A few years ago, the game sold for pretty high prices at online auction sites, but at the time of this video, you can easily find a copy for under $20. Copies in Japan run from about $1 to $10, and if you have a Japanese PSN account on the PlayStation 3, Gunner's Heaven is available as a PS1 classic download for 600 yen, or a little over 6 US dollars. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please rate or leave a comment. Thanks for watching, this is Jimmy Hoppa. Take care.